More earthquakes along the border of northern Syria and Turkey have killed at least eight people. The quakes destroyed buildings which were damaged by earthquakes just two weeks ago. More than 47,000 people are known to have died in that disaster. The United Nations says that more aid is needed. Among the most vulnerable survivors of these earthquakes are children. DW's Yulia Han has this report. In a schoolyard in Karaman Marash, an improvised painting lesson. These children and their families have been left homeless by the quakes. They live on the school grounds now, a group of volunteers looking after them. The kids' paintings don't reflect the new reality. They draw homes that are undamaged, lives that are still intact. We paint a lot. They love painting. And they like to read. Thanks to some people here, we got a lot of books, paint, pens and pencils and paper. My observation is that if we play games with the children and are around all the time, the effects of all this can be postponed a little bit. Kahraman Marash is one of the cities worst hit by the quakes. Entire neighborhoods have collapsed. Thousands died here, including children. In the neighboring province of Hatay, a heartbreaking tribute to the youngest victims. Volunteers placed red balloons on the ruins of destroyed buildings to remember the children who died. At the schoolyard in Karaman Marash, for the children who survived, the memories are still fresh. I was at home when it happened. I jumped up. It was really bad. The walls were shaking from left to right, and the house next to ours collapsed. And now, are you afraid? Yes, whenever there's an aftershock, I start crying. And it's no different for the parents. My husband was working that night. I have four children. I had to get them all out of the house somehow. They were crying so much. We couldn't take any of our clothes with us. Later, I went back to get some blankets. But the trauma the children experienced is what worries me the most. The children aren't okay. They wake up at night and cry. If there's a slight shaking, they immediately think it's an earthquake. They have suffered psychologically. The tent camp here has been growing bigger by the day. The volunteers who came to play with the kids have also cobbled together a kitchen to provide lunch and dinner. They hand out thousands of meals per day. What started as a spontaneous operation now looks likely to become a long-term project. At first, we just wanted to respond to people's emergency needs, but we realized that they need so much more than just food. As night falls, a surprise for the children. The schoolyard becomes an open-air cinema. There is even popcorn and hot chocolate. This strange new life in a makeshift camp, a joyful adventure, if only for a few hours. And for more now, I'm joined by Dan Stewart. He's with Save the Children UK. He is in Turkey's Hatay province tonight. Dan, it's good to have you with us. Um, tell me, what is the situation right now in the city of Gaziantep? I mean, do, do we have a sense of how many children need help right now? Well, we know that across the, the full region, that southern Turkey and northern Syria, where these earthquakes have struck, um, there are at least 7 million children who have been affected and need help.
Um, and, you know, speaking just from last night, we had another earthquake here in southern Turkey, which must have been absolutely terrifying for children who have already lived through such a traumatic experience once. Um, myself and the team were actually on the road when it happened. Um, the ground shook violently. Um, our car swerved and we were able to pull off um, and wait for the shaking to pass. But our, mind, our minds immediately turned to the millions of children mm. and families um, across the region um, and the fact that they're really reliving the same nightmare that they experienced yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it, it is. It's hard to get your mind around that. And it makes me wonder what kind of support are you able then to give children at the moment? Well, what's really important um, is for children to return as far as possible in you know what is a, a terrible situation to a sense of normality and stability. Um, so that means, first of all, um, ensuring that they are safe with their family as far as possible. Um, and then what we're, we're doing is we're going around some of the, the small settlements um, and we're providing sort of structured play with the children, um, some of the sorts of activities that you were just showing. Um, and in actual fact, um, a simple drawing class can be a really effective way of helping children start to process and express what they've been through. Mm. Um, very sadly, this week, we've had um, children who have, in fact, drawn dead bodies that they saw after the, uh, the first earthquake struck, which mm. is, of course, a horrific thing to think of. But at the same time, for young children, drawing really can be a language and it mm. really can help them to express their grief and start to process things. Dan Stewart with Save the Children UK. Dan, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. And we certainly appreciate all the work that you and your team are doing. Thank you. Well, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock and Interior Minister Nancy Faeser are visiting some of the worst hit areas in Turkey today. DW's correspondent Yulia Han has been with them and told us more about the trip. Well, the minister's message today was, and uh, I believe they have made that very clear, Germany will stand by the earthquake uh, survivors here in Turkey and in Syria as they battle the aftermath of this disaster. They have expressed their condolences to all those who have lost a loved one under the rubble, and almost everybody here in the quake hit region has. They have expressed their deeply felt sympathies and their solidarity. We actually joined the minister's uh, uh, during a visit to one of the tent camps here in the area in Pazarjik in the province of Karamanmaraş. That was one of the rather well-organized campsites set up by the Turkish Disaster Management Authority, AFAD, that is a government agency. The, the ministers were speaking with residents, with the camp management, with a team of German medics providing care for people in that particular camp. But that was just a snapshot of the much bigger reality here on the ground, which is a very bitter one. Uh, tens of thousands of people are still believed to have no or hardly any access to shelter, to heating, electricity, toilets, to medical care. This is a massive humanitarian crisis, one of the largest Turkey has ever seen. And actually, while the ministers were talking to camp residents and to us journalists, we felt the earth shaking again. There have been more than 6,200 aftershocks since the first quakes hit about two weeks ago. So this situation is an ongoing nightmare for people here on the ground. And that was a reminder for the ministers as well of the situation people are uh, dealing with here right now. And Yulia, experiencing that new earthquake after all you've seen in your reporting on the disasters and the humanitarian crisis, it must have been terrifying. Can you tell us about what kind of damage it has caused? Well, you know, it is hard to um, get an overview of the kind of new damage that has been um, caused because the devastation before the latest quake was already massive. Uh, entire cities have been flattened, entire neighborhoods. Uh, many cities are hardly recognizable anymore. Um, we hear that the latest trauma has caused massive uh, panic. But of course, the humanitarian need here on the ground continues. Uh, the German ministers today pledged another uh, 50 million euros in aid, bringing the total amount up to more than 100 million euros. A part of that is intended for Syria, 17 million. And getting aid into Syria has been, as we uh, 
as we know, one of the major challenges. We're talking about emergency assistance like tents, generators, camping beds, mm -hmm. sleeping bags. Uh, this kind of aid is being brought into the area. It's being flown in by the German armed forces. Uh, so the focus is on emergency humanitarian assistance, but there is also a long-term focus, of course. It needs to be on, on reconstruction. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that update. That's our correspondent, Yulia Han, reporting. With me now from Ankara, James Gray. He's the Chief of Child Protection at UNICEF. James, good to have you with us. Uh, just in terms of numbers, how many children do we think are affected by these quakes? Good morning. Um, approximately 5 million, just over 5 million children have been affected by the quake. And um, we estimate about 2.5 million of those are in need of humanitarian assistance. But obviously, given the, the scope and the scale of the earthquake, the needs are enormous and um, children will be affected in, in many ways from the, the physical and the loss of homes to the need for psychosocial support and so, support to, to help them get through this devastating experience. If we could just dive into the, the physical needs uh, first. What are those needs um, for the children right now? Many children have lost their homes and their communities, and um, it's incredibly cold down there. The nights are cold. They're sleeping in tents, in, in temporary shelters, and um, oftentimes on the streets because they're too scared to go back to their homes. So there's the immediate need, needs around um, clothing and shelter, warmth, blankets, heaters, um, food and water and also child-specific needs, um, children's clothes or uh, menstrual hygiene products for girls. Um, so, so getting these needs across um, at this stage, especially given the cold, especially given the fact that many are out in the open, is crucial. James, one thing the report did a great job of was highlighting the trauma side, the, the mental side of what's gone on. How is it possible mm. to help children with such trauma at this moment? Children need stability, they need safety, and they need care. And these are our priorities at the moment. Um, so first of all, we need to make sure that um, children are receiving psychosocial support. So they're having access to support, they're having access to counselling if that's necessary, um, but also that they're getting an opportunity to um, have a routine and um, play, interact, um, fun, engage with their, with their peers and, and with loved ones. And we're doing this through establishing child-friendly spaces. So these are protected, safe spaces where children can go and um, interact with their peers. There are structured activities, play, non-formal education, life skills, and it's an opportunity for them to, to try and hopefully forget some of the trauma, at least in that minute, in that moment, um, and um, forget what's going on around them, but also to do this in a safe and supportive environment with trained professionals. Also um, ensuring that children are cared for. So children have been uh, separated from their, from their families and loved ones, and we're working hard to ensure that they are returned to their families as soon as possible and receive care. So it's the, the provision of care, ensuring their safety and ensuring their stability will, will be crucial for helping them. James Gray from UNICEF in Turkey, we wish you the best of luck and thank you for your time.